This Week at NASA. Two, one, booster ignition and liftoff of Shuttle Endeavour. Two weeks after their launch aboard Space Shuttle Endeavour, the STS-130 crew made a safe return to Earth with a smooth landing at the Kennedy Space Center. Main gear touchdown. Pilot Terry Burt's deploying the drag chute. Nose gear touchdown. Houston Endeavour, wheel stop. Roger, wheel stop Endeavour, welcome home. Congratulations to you and the crew on an outstanding mission. Installing the tranquility node and opening up the cupola's windows to the world. Well, Houston, it's great to be home, but it was a great adventure. In the 14 days they spent in space, the STS-130 crew delivered and installed the Tranquility Node and a seven-windowed cupola on the International Space Station. The cupola is a robotic control station with six windows around its sides and another in the center that provides station crews with the best view in space, a panorama of Earth, celestial objects, and visiting spacecraft. Until now, space station crews have had to peer out relatively small portholes for limited glimpses of what passed below. Hey, I just uh, want to say that uh, STS-130 uh, is mission complete. Uh, we're safe on deck here in, uh, in uh, Kennedy Space Center, and, and uh, that's due to the work of a lot of people. We had a great team. Uh, we had uh, tremendous hardware to bring up. Uh, Node 3 was pristine. Cupola was beautiful, uh, both in design and care. Uh, before we left, and uh, Endeavour, uh, my goodness, what a what a machine! She was uh, she was perfect uh, throughout the flight, and uh, we brought her back safe and sound uh, due to a a great mission control team as well. Hey guys! A phone call from President Obama was a mission milestone. The president spoke from the Roosevelt Room of the White House with both the STS-130 and Expedition 22 crews aboard the ISS. I think I speak for all the young people here. Uh, everybody back home, uh, how proud we are of you, how excited we are uh, about the work that's being done on the space station, uh, and uh, how committed we are to continuing uh, human space exploration uh, in the future. The president discussed their missions with commanders George Zamka and Jeff Williams and their respective shuttle and station crew members. Well, thank you very much, Mr. President. It is a, a large team effort. Uh, in front of you, you have the uh, uh, the joint crew of Endeavour and, uh, and the space station, and we are the ones that are fortunate enough to be able to uh, accomplish this great mission together uh, in space, but there are many thousands of people around the world that get, gave the best of themselves uh, over many years in order to, to have the days that we've been having up here. Mr. Obama noted the ISS's new era of discovery and innovation that'll foster scientific breakthroughs through advances in space research conducted in the station's laboratories. When we do um, cellular research for even, uh, like for cancer research for instance, uh, on Earth the cells actually collapse under their own weight and so it, their growth on Earth are a little bit distorted. Here, without the gravity effect, we can grow cells very purely and understand the mechanisms by which that they are replicating. The president also took special interest in the station's new cupola that, in addition to its great views, will host a robotics workstation. The amazing work that's being done on the International Space Station, uh, the, not only by our American uh, astronauts, but also uh, our colleagues from Japan and Russia, uh, is just a testimony to uh, human ingenuity, a testimony to extraordinary uh, skill uh, and courage that you guys bring to bear and uh, is also a testimony to why continued space exploration is so important and, and is part of the reason why uh, my commitment to NASA uh, is unwavering. But Middle school students from Michigan, Florida, North Carolina and Nebraska who were in Washington for an engineering competition and several dignitaries joined President Obama to ask questions of the orbiting astronauts. This is Ruth coming from North Carolina. Um, what are some of the benefits of exploring space as opposed to exploring other places on Earth? Learning about how we ourselves work and how we can handle changes if we go somewhere very different than what we're used, used to is something that's valuable also on Earth because our environment changes on Earth too. And in terms of uh, health and medicine, we understand better how our own bodies work. So there's a lot to be learned. 
This was the second call President Obama has made to the International Space Station. He spoke with the crews of STS-119 and Expedition 18 last March. Bye-bye, guys. New findings by NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory in the Andromeda Galaxy have provided a major advance in understanding a type of supernova believed critical to studying dark energy. A zoom into this composite image of Andromeda, also known as M31, shows astronomers that the merger of what's left of two dense stars is the likely cause of many type IA supernovas. Type IA supernovas have been used to measure the accelerated expansion of the universe. Astronomers believe that expansion is being caused by the dark energy they think pervades the universe, and about which they know very little. The telescope aboard NASA's Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, or SOFIA, was successfully activated during a January 15th test flight of almost six hours. Engineers examined the telescope's movement and stability to verify that it could remain locked in on a celestial object while the aircraft maneuvers in flight. This successful dry run comes after the telescope's large cavity external door was opened during two test flights in December. These developments paved the way for SOFIA to begin astronomy missions as early as this spring. A new NASA website can help our future explorers and leaders better understand the hows and whys of climate change and what they can do to make our planet more habitable. Called Climate Kids, the new website is the latest companion to NASA's award-winning Global Climate Change website. Aimed at students in grades four through six, the multimedia-rich site uses age-appropriate language, games, and humorous illustrations and animations to help break down and understand an important topic Excuse most me, adults no find difficult to grasp. Kind of far south for a polar bear, ain't ya? You don't say. Look, my habitat is shrinking, <gasps> and I obviously fell asleep on the wrong iceberg. What'd you say? Now, Climate Kids below. can be found at <laughs> http colon double slash climate.nasa.gov slash kids. Godspeed, John Glenn. 48 years ago, Mercury astronaut John Glenn became the first American to orbit the Earth when an Atlas rocket successfully carried his Friendship 7 capsule into space. Roger, zero J, and I feel fine. Glenn completed three orbits to usher in a new era of space travel. Oh, that view is tremendous. That eventually led to Apollo astronauts walking on the moon. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.gov.